you ready to stay in tune? Hi, I'm John Wyeth, and I'm gonna show you a tuning of my guitar using a capstone project. So what's gonna happen is there's an LED here. When it's a red, it means it's a listening. And when it is a green, that means the string is untuned. So I'm gonna tune the first three strings here. So for number one, I'm gonna enter number one on our app interface here. See that? And here we go. First string is tuned. Gonna do, gonna do the second string now. Second string is now tuned. And finally, the third string. tuned. And now that all six strings are tuned, Hello, my name is Alex and I'm going to give you a brief overview of our device. It is made up of a microphone input circuit including a bandpass filter, frequency detection code, and a servo motor and Arduino. The microphone input circuit performs two fundamental functions. It amplifies the microphone's output signal to make it suitable for signal processing and filters frequencies outside of the necessary frequency detection range using a bandpass filter so there is no degradation of the signal from either too high or too low frequencies. The frequency detection code uses an enhanced algorithm of the DFT to detect which frequency is being played so we can match it to the note we want to tune. Then we define functions within the Arduino to control the servo motor that turns the tuning peg towards the correct note. My team members will expand on this. The reason we wanted to do this project is because we are a group of engineers in training who are somewhat musically inclined, and we thought it would be an interesting idea to make a guitar tuner for beginners to music who needed help, and veterans who wanted a quicker solution than tuning by ear or with a tuner. Along the road to creating this product, we realized that it could be used for other string instruments as well, with a little bit of modification to the motor attachment for the tuning pegs and our code for different string frequencies. Hi, my name is Kassin, and I'm going to be talking about the microphone input circuit used for the Stay in Tune device. Looking at the microphone's output signal, we see two main issues with the waveform. One being it is too small and two being that there is high frequency noise and low end energy capable of degrading the signal. This can be seen through the following demonstration. We can also see high energy noise when we zoom into the plot. These high energy frequencies are capable of degrading the signal and would produce inaccurate results when detecting the signal's frequency. Looking at the filter output waveform, we see a much more amplified and cleaner signal. As the high frequency noise has been removed, the Arduino can now successfully perform frequency detection techniques and provide accurate results. When beginning preliminary work on the filter design, it was necessary to watch the frequency response using software such as LT Spice. Here is a process of building the simulation file. The filter is going to be powered by the 3.3 voltage source coming from the Arduino, and the op amps will be powered by two 9 volt external batteries, providing positive and negative 9 volts to the op amps in order to amplify the signal. Hi, my name is Andrew Faulkner. Frequency detection is vital to tuning strings as each guitar note generates a specific frequency depending on how tight and how thick the string is. We must know what each string's frequency value is so that we can modify it to the preset frequency of the correct note. To identify these frequencies in our code, we first read in 256 samples at a rate of 1,024 samples per second. We then window these samples to prevent spectrum leakage. 
We then use an enhanced version of the DFT, the discrete Fourier transform, called the cooley tukey algorithm with bit reversal. This algorithm greatly reduces the time it takes to identify the frequency spectrums of an input, and the bit reversal minimizes the extra space needed to perform this faster algorithm. When we actually test string inputs from our microphone, we find that the spectrum output for both the 110 Hz and the 330 Hz string show peaks that correctly correspond to expected values with some high and low frequency components that we can discard. You can also see an output spectrum from us strumming all six strings. Here you can see peaks that correspond to an acoustic guitar's natural frequencies, as well as some harmonics and small noise. We can easily find the loudest signal's frequency by looking at the highest peak. We identify this frequency as the note being played, and then after some error checking and averaging, we begin to tune the note to its correct value. So after some iterations, uh, this was our final design of the motor attachment to attach to the knobs of the guitar. And this is the proposed attachment for the violin. And finally here, we have the 9 volt battery attachment for the breadboard, which keeps our design non-intrusive.